Completing a Stoke triple expansion engine part 11, drilling the crosshead to fit some bolts, cleaning parts using my tumbler polisher and working out how to time the slide valve of the intermediate cylinder. This triple expansion engine is well made but unfinished and here's an example. Two of the bolts have been fitted that hold the gunmetal plate against the crosshead slide bar. For this small and delicate job I've decided to use my Proxon bench drill. All it is is a small drill press which holds a Proxon motor tool. Why am I doing it this way and not using the main drilling machine? Well I'm really paranoid about snapping the drill off in the crosshead. This is a delicate operation, the drill bit that I'm using is tapping size for 7BA and the holes in the gunmetal plate are already drilled to that size. On such a small drilling machine it's a compromise between the speed that you run it at and the loading you put on the drill bit. If you run the mini drill too slowly the hole takes a long time to go through the steel. And if you run the mini drill too fast two things are likely to happen. One being you'll probably overheat the drill and burn out the tip or if you run the mini drill at too high a speed and put too much load on it you'll probably burn out the mini drill as well. When using small machines you really need to give them time to do the cutting or drilling or filing or sawing or whatever the tool does. After drilling two holes all the way through the steel part then I enlarge the holes in the gunmetal bit to be clearance size for 7BA. Then I use the 7BA tap to thread the holes in the steel part to allow me to fit the two 7BA bolts that you can clearly see here. Just one more little job that needed completing. Now it's time to change direction. This clip shows six 21st century steam company cylinder drain cocks. These are threaded 530 seconds by 40 threads per inch. The finish is okay, it's very much like the full size, but I'm going to polish them. Polishing and cleaning up parts is a real pain. My hands get very black and dirty using the polishing spindle and it tends to round the edges of whatever I'm polishing. However, I've bought a new machine. If you follow my channel, you will probably have seen the videos that I've made about using this tumbler polisher. It's very Chinese, cheap and cheerful, but it works. Well, apart from the belt, which is made of entirely the wrong material and in no time at all, it wears out. Two belts actually came with the machine and now both of the belts are worn out which is not good considering the amount of polishing would be about 10 hours I think. I've thrown away these horrible belts and I'm now using an o-ring and so far that's done about 6 or 7 hours of polishing without event. These o-rings are available from my friends at Blackgates Engineering. They're not expensive but seem to do the job very well. The media that I'm using is called Lyman Tough Nut Plus. You will note that I only put one of the larger parts in. I thought it was a good idea not to put all of the eccentrics in at one go because they would collide with each other and may get damaged. Maybe I'm being a bit overcautious, but it's better to be safe than sorry. And while I'm doing this, my hands are not getting dirty, which really makes a change. Which means that some of the more stupid viewers will no longer have to write in and ask me why my hands are so dirty. After around four hours of polishing, I took the parts back up into the workshop and here I am sat at the bench and here are the parts fresh out of the polisher looking very shiny. I'm beginning to think it was a good idea buying this polisher. Just look at the finish on the steel parts and the copper parts and the brass parts and the gunmetal parts. The only problem is the media that I'm using to clean these components gets everywhere. Wherever there is a hole in the component you can guarantee that some media finds its way in there. Even here, for instance, in the end of the expansion link. And here's some in one of the other links. It's very easy to poke the media out of the holes. I use the piece of welding wire. The parts that attracted the most media were the drain cocks. And to clear these, I had to remove the taper plug and poke a piece of welding wire through the centre. The eccentrics felt a little bit stiff so I dismantled them to clean them and put them back together. I haven't shown the dismantling of these. I oiled the parts and here I'm just checking that they're okay. I'm wiping away the excess oil that I applied. Strangely, the only part that didn't clean up was this hand wheel. It came out sort of looking like this. It's made from phosphor bronze and it was very badly tarnished indeed. 
To save time, I cleaned this up on the polishing spindle because I didn't fancy putting just this part back in the tumbler for another three hours. Here's a shot of the cylinder blocks of the engine. The high pressure cylinder looks out of line, but it isn't, only in this clip, because one of the mountings is not there. One problem I was studying over a period was how to set the valve timing of the intermediate cylinder, because the valve chest is an integral part of the intermediate and low pressure cylinder casting. I need to get some dimensions from the drawing. I've blurred the drawing out, this is not bad camera work. I can't show the drawings because they are copyright to Stuart Models. I confirmed the sizes by measuring the part as well. And why am I doing this, and what's this piece of brass? To time the intermediate cylinder, I need to make a dummy steam chest. I'm going to use a couple of pieces of brass like this. And after a bit of milling, I'll be able to mount these two pieces of brass in position to hold the valve rod with the slide valve in the centre. Plenty of marking out blue is needed here because the holes I drill in these parts need to be accurate. The first thing to do is to drill two mounting holes in the pieces of brass. These holes are going to be very close to the edge. And I could have left the pieces of brass a bit longer. There's a reason for not doing that which I will reveal in the next episode. I was puzzling over the best way to time the valve in the intermediate cylinder. I even phoned Ronnie Mall in Scotland and asked him how he did it. Ronnie told me how he did it and I felt ashamed for being so stupid because it's quite simple really. I'll show the machining and the fitting process in the next episode. But that's it for now. As always, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.